1700's Flintlock Pistol. A customer walks into the gold and silver pawn shop, hoping Rick will take his 1700s flintlock pistol off his hands. Hey, how's it going? How you doing? Um, what do we have here? I was hoping you could help me out with that one. Did you do the amazing restoration on it? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like 1700s, early 1800s flintlock that someone thought it would be a good idea to vomit on. <laughs> the customer drops his asking price for the item, but Rick had some concerns since it was quite apparent the item had been tampered with. How much are you looking to get out of this thing? Um, I want to see if I can get 500. <sighs> to address his concern, Rick offered to call in his arms expert. Well, here's my problem. Someone got really stupid with it. They spray painted or maybe hand painted the barrel. Not only that, they did a really bad job. <laughs> The only thing you got going for it, I could tell by the wood that it's old. Okay. Okay. Your lock is broken, which means I pull the trigger, this doesn't fly forward. But you know what? Let me call my buddy in who deals in guns and let me see if there's just something he can do with it. Okay. Give me a few minutes, I'm gonna give him a call. A very unsatisfactory paint job left the gun with a few faults that made the item inoperable. It's definitely hand painted. You can see all of it on the wood here. The stuff that's gold should be brass, and I can just see that little bit of brass peeping through, so that's good. The stuff that's silver should be steel, and... That's, oh. that's destroyed, yeah. Oh. I think probably the mainspring, that's what would give this tension, is either gone or broken. After a quick analysis of the item, the expert comes up with an estimate. So how much would you charge me to restore it? I think it would be about $1,000. Once we restore it, if I can get it functional, I think it's at least 3,000. Okay. All right, thanks man, I'll let you know if I get it. With the estimated value to go by, Rick makes his offer. So, I will give you 150 bucks and relieve you of your problem. <laughs> Would you do 250? I'll give you 200 bucks. It's risky buying this. I mean, I, you know, I don't know what I'm buying. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'll do the 200. Okay, all right, sweet. Um, just follow me right over there. We'll do some paperwork and uh, I'll pay it. After a very brief round of negotiation, the seller settles for $200. Rick eventually hands the gun over to have it restored. How you doing, buddy? I got a surprise for you. It's all done. It's done. It's pretty looking. Isn't it nice? Yeah, it doesn't even look like the same gun. It actually came out better than I thought it would come out. After restoring the item successfully, Rick gets very surprising news on the item's value if it works. If this fires correctly, I think you get at least $5,000 for it. So you shoot it and let's hope it doesn't blow up when you shoot it. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm here for, my friend. <laughs> Just finding one of these guns in any condition is incredibly hard to do. Finding one that you can restore is one in a thousand, and finding one that we can actually fire is basically one in a million. I got my headphones on, so I can't hear you. <laughs> With the item having been restored to working condition, Rick would be getting $5,000 for an item he bought for $200. Line Mars Space Explorer Toy. The gold and silver pawn shop plays host to a seller hoping to sell his World War II era toy. I have here, I have here my uh, antique space explorer toy. Cool. This is a Mark's 10 toy. Slowly through the years, there's been like this massive collector community for things like this, especially to find one of these things in great shape. This is something little boys played with, and um, you know how little boys are. We destroy everything. Uh, <laughs> that's right, that's right. The item being a very rare find makes Rick giddy with joy. So how much you want for it? Well, I looked all over the place for this, and I found in an old toy magazine where it was listed for $5,500. Now, that's with the box, of course, but I figured 3,000 would be a good price to ask for. Okay. This is one of the holy grails. This is one of the big ones. And this looks like it's beat up a little bit, but this is in incredible shape. 
I would really like my friend to come down and take a look at it. Sure. Give me a better idea of a price. Due to the absence of the expert, Rick takes a gamble and proceeds with the purchase. Box for it. <sighs> you know, and when it comes to toys, it comes to anything like this. Condition is everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's, it's an incredible shape. I'll give you that. But it's definitely not perfect. Right. 1750 Rick, being the professional negotiator, gets the customer to accept his offer after a very intense banter. I'll give you 1200 bucks. I have to resell this thing. Okay? Right. They are very collectible, but maybe one out of 20,000 people collect old sheet metal toys, right. and then you got to find someone willing to pull that kind of money out of their pocket. What'd you do, 1300 Let me do 1250. Sure. All right. All right, thanks, man. I'll meet you right over there and uh, we'll do some paperwork. Okay. okay. To ease his mind, Rick takes the toy over to Johnny Jimenez, his vintage toy expert for appraisal. So what'd you pay for this? 1250. And if I lose money, it's your fault because you weren't here. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you something, man. I mean, with the condition that it's in, you could sell this easily for 2500 Cool, man. So you'll do well with this. Thanks, man. The expert's appraisal estimates the toy to be worth twice the amount Rick paid for. Samurai Sword. In one of the early episodes of Pawn Stars, a seller brought in a sword forged by the Asutsugu family line for Major Samurai, hoping Corey could take it off his hands. You look familiar. Did you sell me something before? Not long ago, I brought you a Grammy Award and sold it. This guy came in a while ago and sold my dad a Grammy Award, which we later found out we weren't allowed to sell. So I got to proceed very carefully here. I got something for you. Oh, sweet, a ninja sword. No, that's a samurai sword. Same thing. The seller, an attorney of law, gives his motives for selling his item. According to him, he received the sword as payment for legal work he did. Taking his words for it, Corey decided to take a risk by proceeding with the purchase despite the absence of the expert. Any idea what you're looking to get out of it? $5,000. Probably my biggest concern is whether or not this could be restored in the States. That being said, my man, I'm seeing like 800 bucks. That's not even $100 a century on this thing. It's worth every bit of $5,000. Problem I have is that I don't know enough about it to pay you that much. I'll go up to 12. Corey tries to get as much as he can from the offer, but the seller wouldn't budge. I'll come down to four. If you're gonna hold my feet to the fire and make me pay as much as I can, it's gonna be 1,500 bucks. I'll come down to 2,000. I've got five of them right there. 1,500 bucks, my man. That's all I'm willing to risk. Deal. Deal? All right, Chum, you wanna take care of him? Hell yeah. The seller eventually settles for Corey's offer of $1,500. To get Rick off his back, Corey eventually meets with Mike Yamasaki, who was out of town for the sword's appraisal. Hey, what's up, Corey? How you doing? Uh, I got this for you to take a look at, man. I took a shot on it for like 1,500 bucks, and I'm baffled, man. I couldn't tell you what I bought. It's a samurai sword. Shut up, Chum. To assail Corey's concern about the sword, the expert takes it apart for inspection. So do you have any concerns about this sword? Pretty much I spent 1500 bucks on something I really don't know that much about. Well, let's see if you got lucky. This is the proper way to take apart a Japanese sword. They've been doing this style for centuries. We take off the handle so we can see if it's signed. And it does have a signature. Is it Yasusugu? Yes, that's right. Okay. This maker did not work for merchants. He only worked for high-level samurai. Oh, wow. You see this mark right here? This is the family crest of the Tokugawa family who ruled for 250 years, from 1596 all the way down until the 1800s. And the generations of this swordsmith kept the use of this mark. In Japan, if you were caught using this mark without any permission, you could be beheaded and your entire family as well. After inspection, the expert discovers the sword belonged to a very high-level samurai with ties to ancient Japan's imperial family. What year was it, mate? In the late 1600s, the swordsmith is the fifth generation. What do you think it's worth? Well, in as-is condition. It's probably worth about five to 6,000 right now. Oh, it's a score, big hoss. 
So you can take it and restore it for me, right? Well, I can take care of it for you. It'll be about $3,000. And what's it worth after that? Oh, this sword, because he's a rare maker, you're looking at probably about 15000 Take it. <laughs> Appreciate it, Mike. All right. <laughs> after the restoration and sharpening of the blade, the expert estimated it could be worth about $15,000, which is 10 times the amount Corey paid for it initially. Snowden Sculpture. A woman brings in a statue made by M.L. Snowden, a very famous American sculptor. What do we have here? An ugly piece of artwork. Okay. So it's done by... Snowden. M.L. Snowden. Mm -hmm. Got it from a former in-law, and I'd like to get rid of it, just like I got rid of them. All right, all right, that, that sounds like you're a little bit bitter. Mm, just a little. <laughs> Due to the absence of the expert, Rick decides to buy the sculpture by relying on a hunch. It's neat. I mean, how much were you looking to get out of it? $50,000. $50,000. Um, normally, I, I got a friend who I usually call the expensive artwork, but um, he's out of town. It is nice. This is very collectible. People love this stuff. Um, I'll tell you what. I'll give you 20 grand. Deal. I'll take it. Whoa. <laughs> that was easy. Okay. Um, 20 grand. All right. Thanks so much. I just massively overpaid for this. Let's go do some paperwork. Sweet. All right. <laughs> In a very brief moment that was almost worrying to Rick, who managed to get the statue for $20,000. What do you think? Wow, M.L. Snowden. That is Photon from the Elements of Light series. Okay. Yeah, I got it off a lady and I paid her 20 grand for it. I figured I couldn't go wrong. Wow, that's now. This piece, this series, originally sold fifty-eight, sixty thousand. Eventually, getting a hold of Chad, his art expert, the man gives Rick his honest appraisal. All right, the big question: What's it worth? Because I paid a lot of money for it. Uh, I would put this one probably at about thirty-six thousand. Okay. But the thing about Snowden is, this is investment quality art, and this kind of stuff, it's only going to go up. $36,000? I think the market will bear that, yeah. Rick quickly requests what it's worth. To know if his gambling paid off, he discovered the statue is worth an estimated value of $36,000. And since it's art, it could rise exponentially. Chad thinks I can get right around $36,000 for it. You want to buy it, Chad? No, comprende. Uh... <laughs> yeah, there's, we still have to sell it. It's... It'll sell. Well... You it's, guys are not exactly interior designers. No, we're more of a yes. beer crowd, not a fine wine crowd, and it's still ugly as hell. Yeah, it's, I am a good interior designer, and I would not put that in any interior. It's horrible. They'll never get it. They're but. not art lovers. To celebrate his huge paying gamble, Rick invites Corey and Chun Li over so he can rub it in their faces. Order of the White Eagle Medal. Rick bought himself what he thought to be a Polish medal for $6,000, since he did not know what the medal might really cost. He called in his military antique expert, Craig Gottlieb, to have a look. Tell me about this uber, uber interesting uh, medal I have. It's a Polish medal. I looked that up on the internet. Uh, first of all, it's not technically Polish. What do you mean, not technically Polish? It's Russian. Craig explained the real background of the medal to a very attentive Rick. In 95, Poland was partitioned into three parts, Prussia, Austria, and Russia, and Russia got the largest part. This order was founded in 1325, and the White Eagle is basically the symbol of Poland. It's on their national emblem, but they changed it. They took the original style of the award, they put it on top of the Russian Imperial Eagle, which is the eagle with two heads. Okay. Okay, so now it's a Russian order, and that's what this is. This is a piece that was awarded during uh, Russia's rule of that portion of Poland. It's a really neat, I mean, this is 800 years of history here. This medal shows just how hard Poland's had it for the past 800 years. They've constantly been conquered and reconquered and fought back for their freedom throughout their entire history. With the background out of the way, Rick asks for the price of the medal. I, I took a big shot in the dark. How big a shot? Um, a $6,000 shot. This metal was probably made in St. Petersburg. Okay. The company was called the House of Bolin. They, in fact, they were the main competitors to Fabergé, so you've got basically here 
a Fabergé quality piece. This is just gorgeous. I'm sorry. I, how I, much? Quit, quit, quit teasing me. Thirty to forty grand. Thirty to forty thousand dollars. <laughs> That's incredible. The medal is valued to be worth around thirty to forty thousand dollars, which brings a smile to Rick's face. But Craig had very concerning news. The bearer of bad news, but the market's really thin on this. Uh, the customers who are buying these usually already have them, so you've got to really look for a customer. When one of these goes up for auction, sometimes it doesn't sell. The thin market for the metal makes it so there's little chance of Rick selling the metal, which leaves him with a check he can't cash. Um, I said the market was thin. That's true. Um, I have a guy I know in Germany that has a box for this metal. He has the ribbon for the metal. He also has the breast star comes in a set, but there's a big gaping hole in his box and it's for the neck order. All right. So I spoke to him, um, he needs to complete the set and he wants to make a deal. On a later date, Craig calls for Rick to tell him he's found a potential buyer for the metal. All right, so, so how much you offer? <sighs> Can I see it again? <sighs> we looked at it for a damn hour last time you were in. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well. I'm just flipping this, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I'll give you $30,000. Craig offers $30,000 for the item. Rick, being the businessman he is, tries to negotiate for more, even if he knows it's the best he can get. Um, it's with... I'm trying to figure out a way to complain about that price. You can't. <laughs> I'm coming out swinging here because I've got it pre-sold, and I'm not making a ton here. Uh, $30,000. I'm going to make a little. You're going to make a lot. Um... $30,000? You buy me dinner? Why not? <laughs> write me a check. Yeah, write, yeah, write, 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 write it. Yeah, write it. Seriously. Rick eventually settles for the $30,000, which is five times the amount he paid for the item and a free meal. 